So I'm here staying Give with <laughs> Debbie Zawinski, uh, the feral spinner, up at their home in the Scottish Borders. And it's quite late at night. I think it's probably nearly nine o'clock, isn't it, Debs? Yes. Yep. But we've come out to do some foraging because I have to go home tomorrow and we're going to forage for dye stuffs for some solar dyes. I'm just going to squidge my way through the gate because, yes, you need a machete to get in. Yeah. Wild and woolly and wonderful. You see, the thing is, this is wild foraging. It's in my garden, but my garden is a wilderness. <laughs> it's a very, very appropriate. So, Ooh. what are we after? We're after the yellow flower over there. I have to be a little bit careful because to the left is an overgrown pond. Okay, okay. So if I'm walking, sloshing my way home on the train tomorrow because I've stuck my foot in it. So, we can, so we're just testing to make sure that this is... I'll let you go ahead, Debs. Ground. Yeah, yeah, it is. Here we are. So, the St John's work, it's beginning to go over now, but I actually waited until Lucy arrived to do this because I wanted to send her home with a solar dye jar and the the bit that you harvest the flowers and this little basket I'm just going to say is oh, I have to I, show this I brought this up with me um, I bought it from Eliza Conway at the New North East Wool Show and I just knew when I, as soon as I saw it that it was a basket for Debs Yep. So she's are. just getting the flowers. And now it's possible that the stems would give a good dye as well. But it's the flowers in particular I used last time. Yep. And my solar dyeing technique is a bit of a cheat. I gather my dye stuff and then I put it in a, a jam jar together with some mordanted wool. And I have mordanted some um, white Shetland. Fibre. Fiber. Yeah, for spinning. For, yeah, fleece. Sorry. Fleece rather than yeah. yarn. And so it's, uh, and I pack my little jars quite tight with plenty of dye stuff. And then technically, solar dyeing, you put the jar in a sunny window in the summertime. And there's sufficient heat to... Um, get the dye stuff to run and the the wool to dye. But I happen to have another gun. <laughs> so I cheated. I'm so jealous. <laughs> I'm so jealous. So I actually put the solar dye pot on the back of the Arga for a week or two before I put them in the windowsill. Now I was I was cooking for Joe and Debs whilst I've been here. And kept thinking, oh, I wonder what these pots are on the back of the argo. I wonder if this is something I can add to my cooking. Ex extra <laughs> spice. And I was thinking, no, stop. Oak leaves. Oak leaves. Oak gold. <laughs> Bramble leaves. Good job I didn't. I think I didn't. Um, so you'll actually see the fleece begin to change colour and the um, colour to bleed into the water. Probably sometimes after a couple of days. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, it's surprising how quick it can If be. you don't have an arga. The sunny windowsill. Sunny windowsill. Top of a radiator. Top of a radiator. A friend radiator. of mine cheated like that once. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you have... I mean, I've got a greenhouse, unheated greenhouse. Oh, that would be brilliant. Would that work? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's just got lots of shelves in. That, that would be really I've been good. told by my family that it's going to be my dying studio. I'm going to be banished. Oh, <laughs> I'm not going to be allowed to do my dyeing in the kitchen anymore. Um, but I, what I did last year, which I just adored, was created a, an advent calendar, solar dye advent calendar. So I, I, I put up 24 jars of natural dye, um, natural dyes and mordanted fleece over the course of the year. And I noted down the order in which I I did them and the occasion because sometimes it was we were on the west coast there's lots of bog myrtle bog myrtle makes a brilliant kind of lovely yellow with a gorgeous smell um I know you showed me the product project you'd made and I thought oh it smells lovely is that why is that yeah it's... and it was actually the the dye 
dye materials you'd used. Yeah, the bog myrtle and the lichen. You never yeah. seem to get the smell of lichen out, but it's gorgeous. Um, so anyway, I put up these uh, 24 solar dye jars. And then when it came to December, I opened, I opened one a day. Lovely. And I sort of... And, and they was it was it was such fun and they were such a surprise. So, oh, what have I got today? Um, and, and so you just did you just rinse them out? Rinse them out, dry them on, on the yoga. Yogurt, um, <laughs> pop them in a plastic bag, and I had them all pinned up on a on a board at the back of the yoga. Um, so you didn't spin them straight away. No. Uh, and did you stick spin them? No, I I did actually spin them. By, on a wheel, uh -huh. and I, um, I decided I wanted to spin them in order and keep the colours separate. Yep. So I spun them, and then I Navajo plied them, which was just a kind of yes, so back on yep. three ply. Um, and That's then I knitted a lecture. top down jelly bag hat. Yeah, because I thought, well, I can. I don't. I want to use all the yarn, and I don't want to run out when I've got to here. So I'll just knit it as long as I can. Yeah. It's got a very long rib for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'm running out. I'm running out. I'll start the rib. I didn't need to. So, how much fibre did you put in the jars, roughly? Do you think? It's, it's really a small handful. It's okay. Not a, it's not a great deal, um, but if you spin fairly finely, it's surprising. Yes. So it's it's something that you can crunch up in your yeah. in a fist. Yeah, I like thought it that. wasn't a lot. So you could have spun it on a one of your stick spinning, Absolutely. or on a drop spindle. Perfect because it's small such amounts, a small amount. Small amounts. It would a be small perfect. daily yeah. project to spin. Yeah, absolutely. Just a little. Um. So and and some of the stuff that I used, I. I I've, I've dyed with before and I thought, oh yeah, this will give me a this colour and this will give me a this colour. But some of them were real surprises. And the reason why I'm doing, I'm actually chopping some of the old flowers here, but I think I think they'll have dyed stuff yeah. too. Um, one of the things that gave me the biggest surprise was the, the St. John's. Oh really? Okay. Because I knew that you're meant to be able to get red. Uh-huh. Um, I thought, yeah, but you have to do a bit of You a... get red from the yellow? Yeah, you do. It, oh, goodness. I'm sure my dye book suggests a special process uh -huh. for extracting the red. I think they... they and now all I've done is bung it in a jar with a bit of... <laughs> and it, it, I got this kind of burgundy colour. I was so excited. This time round, who knows? It could be different, which is one of the joys... But um, solar dyeing must be a really accessible way for non-natural yarn dyers to try oh, so natural yarn dyeing. Totally, Good sentence, totally, that one. So simple. If you can get, you know, I mean, you can even try with unmordant. Too. And what did you mordant with? Well, I used alum. Yep, I, which you can get quite easily yes. um, online and on Amazon, sorry. Um I think I'm sure you can get alum and from the chemist. I think, can't you? Well, I used to buy mine. Yeah, from I'm chemist. not sure. I used to go into Boots. I don't know if they still do it. Um, do you know what it would have been used for previously? No, I don't. No, actually. Well, I never just... thought about that. <laughs> Why would Boots be selling it? But then you used. To, I used to buy my mess from Boots. For oh, your camping stove. Okay. Which you know. Medicinal mess. Hmm, it's a bit dodgy that one. <laughs> this bush. That's a midge. Yeah, they are flying. Um, there is another. Okay. Um, there's another St. John's work round the corner. Okay, but I'm going to walk backwards. Else we have. Uh, that could go in the basket. Got a wild amount of things that shouldn't be here. Um, we do have golden rod over in the corner. All oh, right. We might film. Yeah, yeah, from the, the outside. The outside. Um, there's another wee plant here. I feel like I'm on an episode of Gardener's World. <laughs> <laughs> Only it's a wild garden. I think they would have a <laughs> This is your garden. <laughs> oh dear. So, one wee plant here. I 
I don't know, maybe I should show. I'll put this in whole. So that's the St John's wort. It, it's sort of almost starry little flowers. It's lovely, isn't long it? stamens. And, um, and it's the one you used to buy leaves. from Holland. Well, one would buy from Holland and Barrett for um, cheering. You know, who's the one that was always famous for curing depression, wasn't it? Um, yes, and, that's right. It, it's meant to be a, a, a really valuable, a valuable herb in other herb, would you call it? I suppose you could if it's used for for a medicine. Mm -hmm. um, so that's all that I have here in the garden. But we're not going to drink the dye water, are we? No. No, no I don't think so. <laughs> kind of. But it, the light is getting a bit poor now, but I think you'll pick up the, the, the golden rod because yeah. it is so bright. Bright, bright yellow. And what a funny colour to suggest for me. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be perfect for you, Lucy. And it's what does a, that dye, you would you say? It, does that produce a yellow? Yes, it produces a yellow that's that really mirrors the colour of oh, the Oh fantastic. Forest. Um it's, it's 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 vivid. The plant itself spreads like mad. I know. And um, it's meant oh, to be. there's a bit more you can see. It's oh yes, a bit more St John's water in there. In there as well. But we've got enough here. It's not a mass, but it's enough for a wee solar dye pot. And if we go down the drive, let's see what else there is Oops. in our... Well, there's, there's an apple tree over there. Apparently, you can get kind of pinks out of really? apple bark. But Goodness. No, I've never managed to do it myself, so, so I, so I can't swear to that. So, the eucalyptus that Helen sent up for you, oh, yes. could you put that into a solar jar? Yeah, or does I, that need greater treatment? No, I... I tried that in a solar jar, broke it up into small pieces yep. and just because most barks they suggest you soak for a long time before you actually try and use the the soaked water. Yep. I was get an orange with eucalyptus but I got quite a sort of, um, sort of orangey brown. Uh -huh. so ours was browner but um, yeah it, it's it, it really if you're interested and say oh I wonder what this will give me. Try it. Try Helen, I might be here. pinching some of that back from Deb's and bringing some back with me. Yeah, and then you can you can yeah we can have a play. The end result. Yeah, you can see the colour yeah. it makes. Yep. Yeah. So we've got a big, a big bundle of brambles here. They never make very good berries, and berries don't tend to make good. Dyes. Isn't that funny that you'd assume that to get a dye you would choose the thing that was richest in pigment yeah. like a berry yeah but the dyes tend to be fugitive which means that mostly they're not like bars. they're a stain yeah. that will wash yeah. away or fade away rather than a, a true dye yes that's yeah. right but the leaves the leaves which are quite prickly to they've got prickles underneath so yeah. they're, they're a bit of a pain to pick literally but they will give you a yellow uh -huh. um especially sort of uh reese not too old, you know, sort of fresh, yes, freshly mature leaves. And if you add to your solar dye pot yeah. a, a rusty nail, okay, one rusty nail will probably be sufficient. You will produce a dark charcoal. Oh, really? Yeah, it's really interesting. Um, birch leaves. Uh, we have a birch at the we have a weeping birch at the end of the garden there. Yeah. You probably can't quite see it because it's not. so dim. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, that gives you, the leaves give you a nice yellow. Uh -huh. But if you put um, a rusty nail in with them, you will get a rather nice green. Uh -huh. Greens are difficult to get yes. for dyeing. Often it, you over dye yellow with, with indigo. Yes, yes. Um, and I don't think there's a great deal that I would personally as a dye stuff. Maybe yarrow. Okay. But I'm not quite sure. Oh, mm, yes, I know where there's a yarrow. Okay. Yes. I'll hold this up again because the light in here might be better. So that was our St. John's wort with a lovely sort of two stamens in the middle. This is our lovely Henry. Right. Oh, yes, Henry. Henry probably will try to s steal the fleece. Quite likes sheep. So we just need the flowers of this, so just the flowers, and I'm going to pop those into my jar. Now, 
This it's, is no longer mango chutney. It's no longer mango chutney. In fact, let's put it in this jar because at least you can see yes. the label. It's better to take the labels off, but hey ho, we have. Now, I haven't got a mass in my basket. Nope. Which is why we're using small jars and small amounts of. But ice. it's so much better to not be over ambitious with the amount of yeah. fleece you put in. Yeah. Better to have a little quantity of really nicely dyed stuff. So here we are. I pack some in the bottom. There's my fleece. It's not a mass, but it's amazing what length yes. of of yarn you can get. So it comfortably, without being totally squashed, fits in my fist. Yep. Pop that in. And then pack some more flowers on the top. And press that down. Now, we could probably... I want to leave it. I want to leave some for the second jar as well, as but I want this to be a. So, I would then you can see just see there. That's the where fleece. the vibe. Yep. So that's your indicator of the color, the the colors that that's coming out and the color that the fleece is going. You would fill this up with water and screw the top on tight. Mm -hmm. and I wouldn't. Put a label on. I wouldn't. Yes, I put a little elastic band round. You saw with a bit of paper with folded. With a bit of paper round, yeah. folded. Um, I wouldn't fill right to the very brim because sometimes they, well, the water kind of oozes out a little bit. But I would I would fill it well above the, the level of the flowers. Yeah. And screw your lid on tight. Um, occasionally, because I'm leaving mine a long time. How long is long? That's what I was going to ask you. Before. Well, I'm putting this up in the summertime. I not opening the jar till the beginning of September and December. I mean, <laughs> then it's several months, yeah. and occasionally you'll get a bit of mold growing on top if you haven't kept the seal tight. Yeah, the seal tight, or it's not fully covered by okay. water. But you don't need to leave it that long. Um, so. If you're not aiming for a advent calendar hat, mm -hmm. um, you just take it out when. Yeah. when but it's I think this done. is quite a nice idea that we could maybe collaborate on, Debs, is helping people create their own solar dyeing advent calendar. Mm -hmm. Whether That'd their families fun. will let them have twenty four jars, I think I would be in big trouble at <laughs> home if I started trying to say I want twenty four <laughs> jam jars. In the kitchen. Yes, well... I might, I might have protests from my daughters. Well, it, it, it is sometimes a bit awkward fitting them all on the Arga. Um, <laughs> and, and even the window sills get a bit, mm -hmm. a, a bit, a bit crowded. Yes, um, if you, as I say, if you're cooking at Deb's house, read the labels and the additional <laughs> labels on the jars. Yes. This is not pesto. <laughs> this is not mango chutney. And this is definitely not mango <laughs> chutney either. So I could do with a few more flowers in that. It is a little Take bit lean. One. But there is one other plant I noticed right. in my garden. So I'll top this up tomorrow. Okay. With a few more flowers. Okie dokie. And I'm going to send... This is Lucy's present. This is a <laughs> holiday memento present. I'm going to just send Lucy home with on the train with this, and and she'll put the water in a hose yeah. so it's easy to transport. Yeah. And then we'll we'll get progress reports. Excellent. See Thank what you. Color it turns. Lovely. Thank you. So I am about to leave um, Joe and Debbie's house and go and get my train. And very sadly, go back to normal, back to Locket Land. Um, but I wanted to talk first about this. Is, Debbie has the hat that we were talking about last night. Um, this is her solar advent calendar hat that she dyed in her solar jars last year and opened each day of December. And I will let her talk about it. She's more interesting than me. <laughs> well, here it is. It's 
it's the funniest looking hat you ever saw and I designed it from the the top down as I said but this is the top bit is the 24th of December and the very first colour here at the bottom was from onion skins dye um, onion skins we used to dye eggs for egg rolling at Easter time. Excellent. So, so recycled onion skins. Yeah, definitely, yes. So but we did that with my grandson at Easter. And there were things like the next thing is bog myrtle from the west coast when we went and visited the caravan. Uh, this, this shade here, which is sort of a reddish purplish burgundyish colour, that was what I got from my St John's work. Um, and this is all stuff that I collected from round and about until I got to probably this point mm -hmm. where I was using stuff from a stash. And if you're curious about what the pink is, well, I am. Yes. it's uh, sumac. It's oh, right, lovely. The, the, the sort of, you know, the herb, people use it as a herb. Um, there's a little bit of logwood in there, and then we have madder and Brazil wood. But I did it in such concentration because these were, you know, prepared, dried mm -hmm. dyes. Um, that they're quite, well, they are concentrated. So they were actual dyes that have been made rather than... Yes, ones that I've gathered <coughs> about. I kind of exhausted my possibilities um, at that point. Um, but... But there we are. It is the advent calendar hat, and I'll put it on. It looks it gorgeous I, on. I, I like my advent calendar hat. I mean, it's, it does look peculiar off, but I like its its tassel and its jelly bag bit. And so, the... if you ever see a little stripy pixie frolicking <laughs> through the woods or along the coast near you, probably wearing a stripy top, top as well. It's quite yes. unusual to see Debs in a plain yeah. knit jumper. Yeah, normally, absolutely. she just does, does love her stripes. Yes, yeah. if you see one, accost it and ask it to tell you some <laughs> lovely information. So, so there we are. And I will write the pattern up for this because a couple of people have asked for it. I definitely think you should. Yeah. What we could also talk about is in the footsteps of sheep, because if you haven't found this book, where have you been? Why haven't you been listening to me? Because I shout about this book. This is the best thing I ever have for sale in Locketland. If I, somebody's coming in, comes in and wants wants something to take away, something special, I'll always direct them to Deb's book. And it is the most fascinating and gently informative travel around Scotland. Deb's packed her bags, literally, ran away from home. And... Um, yes, it felt like <laughs> yeah, travel around Scotland, often on foot, hitching lifts. Um, I think you were in your 60s when you did it, weren't you? Um, just about, I think I was 59. 59. And, and I did say to myself, gosh, if I'd waited a year, I'd have had a free bus pass. The times <laughs> when I had to get on my bus. But, um, but yeah, I was yeah. 59. 59. <clears throat> so, you know, it's not the usual thing for... No, and it'll be even more unusual if I get to do another trip at 71. <laughs> yes, but she <laughs> travelled around Scotland. Hoping. She was camping on the beach, um, sleeping in tents in sort of on the yes. side of the road almost, weren't you? Oh, yes. yes. And get your tent really small and then you have a far greater sort of range of places you can pop yeah. it down. I mean, the one I love the photo in the book is the one where you're on the sort of dunes almost. Yes. Looking out to sea and it's incredible. So Debs went, she went to visit all the different sheep breeds in Scotland, um, gathering fleece and spinning as you walked. Uh, if you haven't seen Debbie's stick spinning, I do have some earlier um, podcasts, Locket Land Life on YouTube with interviews with Debs, um, which are fabulous because she is fabulous. And, um, and you design patterns based on the different breeds of sheep you met yes, didn't you? Yeah. and it's but it's a it's a sort of love letter to scotland as well um and all the people you met along the way yeah, um, very much the, i had no idea that the people i met would 
be such an important part because <clears throat> I set out to meet um, Chief. Yes, to to um, find the the native haunts of the native breeds, gather their fleece, spin it up, knit it into my pair of Scottish socks. But I ended up making a pattern for each sheep breed because a, a pair a sock pattern for each sheep breed because there was somebody I wanted to thank by gifting them a pair of socks. Um, so yeah, I, I, I've made so many friends. Yeah. It's a very, with. very special book. Um, so yes, if you haven't read it, I really, really recommend it. It's, it's just something very special, as is Deb's. There's a reason I'm, um, doing these podcasts. There's not, a, there's, there's a very good reason why I came to stay with Joe and Debbie, which was that I was exhausted and needed a break and staying with them in their gorgeous home in my little caravan in their garden is it was just the most obvious perfect solution to a little bit of burnout a little bit of locket land burnout so i'm returning today fully refreshed although i'm tempted to stay longer <laughs> it's been so lovely um but whilst i was here um a very exciting thing happened so when i um arrived on monday joe and debbie had to go into edinburgh for a very important meeting and that was to go to the printer because Debbie is the author of In the Footsteps of Sheep which you can just see next to her which I'll talk about in a minute but in about six weeks maybe longer yes, maybe a couple of months a couple of months yeah, her so brand new book good. Stories in Stitches will be published and coming to a yarn shop near you um, and uh, I've, I've had some sneaky peeks at it and it is gorgeous so I'm going to let Debs talk about it briefly and yeah, and then we'll have a little chat about In the Footsteps as well. Well, yes, sort of Stories in Stitches arose, as many people's ideas, arose during the pandemic. I couldn't go out and do another walkabout like In the Footsteps of Sheep, which I'd hoped to do, but I had lots of stories and their attendant patterns that I'd written um, over previous years and I thought perhaps I'll collect these together and then when I when I looked at when I looked at what I'd um, created if I set them in chronological order I discovered it had formed I called it an eclectic memoir and then it struck me that actually you can tell what's going on in my life by what I happen to be knitting so the story of what I'm knitting very much reflects the story of my life so and it's been a full and fun filled life hasn't it oh yes yes it has mm. i've dodged doing anything terribly um conventional com yes <laughs> <laughs> i was to say significant and i've spent my life making things and, and wandering around and camping and, and and knitting and spinning um but to be able to to put that on paper and i wanted I wanted people to feel inspired by their own knitwear, by their whatever they make themselves, and to value it. It's not oh, just hand knitted something or other. It will tell a story and it will tell a unique and personal story for that individual. Yeah. And we should we should celebrate all of it. Absolutely, because every time you pick up and I find if I pick up my knitting and I've been having a conversation the night before or watching a film or listening to an audiobook. the moment I pick up the knitting, I'm back in that conversation, in that film, in that, on that page of the audiobook that I was listening to, back in that story because it's been knitted in yes, to yeah. the piece of knitting in my hands. And if you extend that to sort of whole life and experiences, and where you were and who you're with when you were making different things and why you were making them. Yeah, it's a whole, it's a history. It's a, mem a memoir. It's yes. something yeah. very, very special. Yeah, and I think I think we should all look at what we create in the same way. Just see the stories that are yeah. embodied in them. Knitted in. Yes. Yeah. I mean, we're used to the idea of knitting in a, 
um, motifs that have meaning yeah. in traditional patterns, but we have our personal stories knitted in there absolutely, too. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, um, I'm very interested in this forthcoming book, um, particularly in chapter 11. Um, say no more <laughs> but it's a uh, yeah yeah we're going on pre-order on my website imminently and yeah it's going to be a glorious book so the fabulous debbie zavinsky and i will um interview her again soon no doubt because she's fabulous i love her <laughs> thank you bye, bye.